Okay, first of all, I would like to thank the organizer for giving me the opportunity to present my work here. So as Stefano said, it, I'm going to talk about integrability of continuous bundle. Yeah. Yes. And since also the, I'm given less than half an hour, I'm just going to go straight to the point of, of this. So throughout the talk, we will denote M is an N plus M dimensional compact manifold. So as you see, there are just maybe two technical words that we need to define from the title, which is continuous bundle, and what does it mean to say that a continuous bundle is integrable? So, definition. An M dimensional. Continuous bundle is okay. I will really emphasize about the continuity is a continuous choice. The continuous choice of M dimensional. Linear spaces at for every P in M. So I mean, I, I think most of you are familiar with this. You you can think of like if M is one, you have just a choice of a of a line which you can think of it as also a vector field. So if M is two, you have a choice of planes. So we said it is continuous, so if the change of the point is continuous. So I also want to define what it means to be integrable before we go to the point of an M-dimensional continuous bundle E is said to be integral, respectively unique. I will just discuss a bit about this. Respectively uniquely, if through every point, every point, there exists an M-dimensional submanifold. Okay, there exists respectively unique <laughs> submanifolds. Everywhere tangent to E. Everywhere tangent to E. Yes. So this is the problem that we are interested in here. And uh, as you may know, so it is a very classical problem in the study of many areas of mathematics. It has application like on PD, or partial differential equation, on ordinary differential equation, and particularly on dynamical system where we are in, and uh, I, will, I will tell you about more a little bit later. So, and also, as you may know, this problem is a very classical problem, and also you might heard about the, the well-known Frobenius theorem, which really gives you a necessary and sufficient condition for integrability of a bundle given uh, regularity. So, and, uh, and before I talk about the, 
the the like the fervent condition, I would like to 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 change a little bit of language because you know you if you have a bundle, you can define it using using differential forms. Okay, let's say if you are in a in a three-dimensional space, you have a distribution of plane, there is an orthogonal vector of it, so you can choose a form sitting on that vector. So that the kernel of that form defines exactly the bundle E. And and uh, you can choose a form also has the same regularity as a, as a bundle. So what I'm saying basically is that given an m-dimensional continuous this bundle E, there exists there exists eta one, okay. Eta n. Since I am in a, E is co-dimension n, so I will have n linearly independent continuous. Yes, one forms. Is that? You have exactly E is given by the intersection of the kernels of eta i's. I equals one n. Yeah. So, what is the usual condition that we took that 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 that, that is in the Frobenius theorem is what is called the involativity. Okay. So, I will define what is that involativity. So from now on, every time I'm taking a bundle, I write it like this, associated to n linear forms, and the regularity of the form is exactly the regularity of the bundle itself. So E equals intersection kernel of eta is this smooth. By smoothness, I, I mean, just see one is enough. Smooth bundle. Theta E is involative if for every, if this is satisfied, eta 1 wedge eta n wedge d eta i equals 0 for all i. Yeah, this is also in most of the textbooks on differential geometry and many kind of textbooks. This is what is known as uh, the involutivity condition. And the theorem of Froben is, is saying that E is integrable if and only if E is involutive. So the problem that we are addressing here is to try to give a, a a version of the Froben theorem by relaxing the regularity assumption. And we will see later what are the motivation of our study, really, why we want to relax this assumption. So we, we need to introduce an, another notion of involutivity here. Okay? So we, we, we introduce the notion of asymptotic involutivity. Yeah, 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 thank you. That's the thing, because this, this quantity here, you cannot talk about it when E is just continuous. You cannot talk about the exterior derivative of these one forms. They don't make sense. They don't make sense. So what we say is that E equals kernel of intersection is asymptotically Involative if there exists epsilon positive and the sequence eta k i i equals one till n k greater than one a sequence of differential c one smooth one forms. 
This is that these two condition holds. We have that these forms they approximate these guys in the C0 norm, eta k i is converging to eta i for all i. This is just C0 convergence. And the most important condition is that we have eta 1k wedge eta lk wedge d n k i. The norm of this times the exponential of epsilon norm of d eta k i is going to zero as k go to infinity for, for every i, one, n. This is what we call asymptotic involutive, and as you can see, if you have smoothness, and involutivity is equivalent to, to this, because you can take exactly your sequence to be the form that you started with, and you have it automatically. I think I'm going to move to, okay. So we need another concept also, which I will tell why we need it, which is a kind of regularity assumption, which is exterior regularity. Say that E of kernel of eta i's is exterior regular if also, we have a sequence, if there exists epsilon positive always, and a sequence as there, but here the sequence that we have here and the sequence that, that, that we have in the other definition, they might be different if the both, both conditions are satisfied. Sequence of smooth one forms, just that. So that this condition is satisfied, meaning beta k i minus b minus eta i, sorry, times exponential of epsilon d eta d beta k i is going to zero as k goes to infinity for every i. You can see really this is, this is kind of thing that the, the rate of convergence should, should really, should dominate how this quantity can blow up because as you know, beta k is, in some sense, it might approximate this continuous form so you can expect the d beta k to behave very badly, meaning exploding to infinity. So what you really want here is this to be controlled, to go to zero faster than this can blow to infinity. And as also you can see, if the starting differential one form was smooth, you have this is automatically satisfied because you take your beta to be the starting form and this is zero at the first step. Yes. Now I'm in a position to state the main theorem that I want to state, which is a joint work with, with Stefano Lozato. Naturally. And myself. So as you can, as you expected, is that E let E be an M dimensional continuous we have that if E is asymptotically involative. Volative, then it is integrable. Maybe not uniquely though, but it is integrable. Moreover, if E is integrable and exterior regular, then it is uniquely integrable. Yes. So this can stand as a as a generalization of the Frobenius theorem for a continuous in the continuous case where we relax the regularity. Also, I should 
I should say that there are various versions of generalization of the flow Benus theorem, which appear in the literature, mainly due to uh, Hartmann and uh, uh, Simic, Slobodan and Simic. So, Hartmann, Philip Hartmann, and I mean, there are many others, so, in the literature. So, Hartmann has a version of Freud Benus theorem where uh, he has uh, he has a stronger version of of, of involutivity, which require which require this quantity d eta to exist for this continuous for this continuous uh, form d eta to exist, and also uh, Simish has a generalization to Lipschitz to Lipschitz continuous bundles, like assuming Lipschitz where where you will check this condition almost everywhere. So. Both of, of these generalizations, they, they, they apply to system where you have some regularity. And our, our case, we, we found, for instance, in dynamical system, an application where you don't, you don't assume any regularity, just continuity, just continuity. That's what I'm going to go first about, to talk about the application on dynamical systems. Is which is, a, which is a class of system which generalizes a little bit what, what uh, Federico defined yesterday, the annals of diffeomorphisms. So they belong to a larger class, which is a class of diffeomorphism that admits uh, what is called the dominated splitting. So I will just recall that briefly, what it means to a system to have a dominated splitting. Let's say, let phi from M to M, C2 diffeo. Morphism is said to have a dominated splitting. Dominated splitting. If conditions holds like we have Tm, the tangent space of M at every point splits into two bundles, E plus F, namely, and, uh, and they are invariant, meaning that if I apply the differential d phi x E x equals E at phi of x, and d phi x F x applied to is of f of five, f of five of x. So you have seen this in the previous course, which is a typical case of, of, of an anus of, anus of diffeomorphism. And there is another condition, which is why we call it dominated splitting, that the supremum of d phi, I'm assuming that I'm given a Riemannian metric that I'm using here, d phi of x restricted to e x. Is less is strictly less than the infinimum e phi of x. So I should also tell you that this is not the most general splitting, like dominate splitting that you can have. This is what is called the absolute dominate splitting. You could require this to be pointwise, but for our purpose, for the application of our theorem, we will we will require it to be absolute. For instance. And as an example, you can see that anus of diffeomorphism, they really have this, they really have this splitting. And the problem that we, we are addressing here is now the integrability, like does it exist? Integra like is E integrable, meaning that we have integral manifold of E, which in the case where it is uniquely integrable, will give a rise to what is called foliation. And so we have this condition Oh, yes, yes. So, yes. This is the core norm, yes, thank you. Yeah, so this is the minimum expansion that you can see on the, on the F, yeah, thank you. So this is a condition that we're requiring, so definition. 
E. Okay, I'm assuming that I have a dominant splitting E is said to have, is said to grow at most linearly. If there exists C D positive, said so that D phi K restricted to E, this norm is less or equal to C K plus D. And uh, an application of the version of our theorem said that also. In this setting, if E grows at most linearly, then it is uniquely integrable. Uniquely integrable. And uh, I mean, this linear growth is is a condition which, which, which is, uh, I mean, you can see that for the annals of diffeomorphism, you have linear growth because what the annals of diffeomorphism, you have this d phi restricted to E is less than one, which is less than d phi restricted to F. So this is really a contraction. So uh, our term is saying that you can allow a little bit of expansion, but not more than linearly. And you, you, still have li you still have unique integrability. So this also could stand as, as a, 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 a new proof of the, of the uh, well-known stable manifold theorem, because the proof that E, in this case of anosov diffeomorphism, E is uniquely integrable is, due, is called the stable manifold theorem. And, and this also gives a, another variation of a proof. And, and so as just the previous lecture was saying, if in the case of partial hyperbolic system also, when you have quasi-isometric on the, uh, when you have isometric, sorry, when you have isometric on the central bundle, because if you remember just half an hour ago, there were, there were, there were this type of splitting that is called partial hyperbolic that the previous speaker just defined. And, and one condition, I mean, which would imply this, for instance, is that EC, you have isometry on the, on, the central, on the central bundle. In that case, you can integrate the join of EC plus, EC plus ES. And you, if you suppose it also for the inverse map, you can integrate these two uniquely. And you take the intersection of the leaves you get, you get exactly invariant foliation tangent to the central bundle, which, which is also a, a, a very well, I mean, a problem for, for the study of, of these systems. So uh, I think, as I said before, our theorem has also other applications on partial, partial, hyperbolic, partial differential equations partial differential equation because the, the original Freud-Benes theorem was, was for the study of, of what is called the FAF system, which is a system of linear PDEs. So you can also apply this to get uniqueness uh, solution of linear PDE. But since I'm given half an hour and the urgency is about dynamical system, so I, 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 this is the, the application that I wanted to tell you about. So I think I stop here. <laughs>